this is a beautiful painting that we're going to do today. A beautiful landscape with fence, trees, grass, and flowers. So I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm just putting some blue paint on my brush, a synthetic brush, and it's only a size 12. It's not, it's not real big. I kind of like working with smaller brushes. But you can use whatever size brush you want, uh, whatever works for you, up to even a half inch or even an inch because it's 16 by 20 canvas. And you can add your blue and a little bit of yellow just to have a little bit of a mixture of colors in the sky. Because you want it to be a little different, don't always have to be the same. So just give it sweeping brush strokes. I have a bit of white on the corner there. Some blue on the top. Just experiment with your brushes and with your paints and your colors. If you want a bluish, greenish, yellowish sky, you can mix all your colors on your canvas. That way you'll get different colors and they're separated. But if you take uh, your colors and you mix them all up on your palette and you get one color, that's all you have is one color. But the way I like to do it is I like to put a little bit of yellow on one corner and a little bit of blue on the other corner and um, just different colors. And that way, uh, just watch. See how it all separates? You know, it's just another way of painting because there's no perfect way to paint. You know, if if you depends on what you want to do and how you apply it to your canvas. But I love to paint this way because you can see how the paints have separated into different colors. Now, just take your brush and add white. And that will start brightening up the yellows. It's a little greenish yellow color. And I'm adding more white to brighten it up. There we go. Blending it up a little bit more just so that it will all blend together nicely. Go. More white again. So the further you come down, the lighter it gets. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish, to make sure it's brighter sky as it comes down. Now I have some burnt umber. I'm going to use that for the trees and for foreground. So get some burnt umber on my that's that's my chip brush. It's a bristle brush, and it's a chip brush is what it's called. And you can get it in my Amazon shop, or you can get it in any paint shop or WalMarts. And they're not very expensive, and see really spreads paint really well and that's uh, how I'm going to start starting the foreground with the burnt umber and then I put yellow on my brush see I didn't mix it together to get one color I'm just mixing it on the canvas so that you can see the colors are separating and don't have just one plain color so there we go Yellow, more burnt umber. Love the way it separates. So my way of teaching is is 
different in some ways that I do like to just throw colors on as long as they're all in the one family like I'm not going to throw a blue in there or an orange uh, well an orange probably would look nice actually but um, I try to keep it all in the one family uh, although the sky has greens and blues and whites and yellows in it but I don't have browns in it so uh, you know you're trying to get it so that it all matches and it enhances each other so Mixing it like that, separating colors, as you can see, will give you different values of the one color. See how you can see the different values? That could, that could be a burnt umber with a lighter, uh, a medium dark and light burnt umber, if you want to look at it that way. So now I'm going down here, I'm just adding more white. Just for now, I like to blend it out and then add more colors a little later. So we got that much almost done. Here we go. Kind of experimenting myself too. I like to just sort of go along with the painting and make it up as I go along. And I might use a reference photo, but I. I'll only look at a reference photo just to sort of get a bit of a layout. Um, but then I just go off in my own little world. <laughs> and that's what I want you to do. I want you to just go off in your own little world. Just learn the basics and then just create. See, I'm putting brown together with white, uh, burnt umber with white and yellow. And more burnt um umber than and yellow. These are background trees. I'm going to lighten them up a bit because I want them to be in the distance. Yes, I lighten them up a bit better. So now, because they're in the distance, we don't, we can't see very much detail. So they're going to be in the distance, far away, so they're going to be lighter. That's just a, a bristle brush also. Probably a size 12. It's hard for me to tell you the size of brushes because different brands, they have uh, different uh, sizes. You might have a 12 and a brand might be a huge brush and another brand might be tiny. So, but I, you can judge the brushes by what you're seeing what I'm using. Just tap, 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 tap. You can add a bit more yellow, you can add a bit more white to your burnt umber just to really brighten it up. Make it almost look like it's uh, fading out in the background there. I'll be putting fir trees over those so some of them might disappear. <laughs> so, but anyway. At least you'll be able to see how to make distant trees, okay? So they can be even lighter than that if you want to. Now I'm going to add a few bushes down on the bottoms of those. Just to make them look even further away. So I just add a little bit of a darker, like just little, little tiny trees at the bottom. Just just to give it a, a more, so it makes them more distant. It almost looks like a building. It would be maybe a, a distant city. <laughs> just gonna smooth out the bottom there. That's just a flat synthetic brush. I have a fan brush here now to get the tree started. So we're going to go into our burnt umber. Now 
what happened here was when I recorded the first one that you just seen, I forgot to press record when I was doing my fir trees, when I was doing my trees. So then I had to go back in and redo the trees on a different canvas. Now I couldn't get the exact same colors, but this is how I did the trees. <laughs> oh, that happens sometimes. Just think here you have it recording and you look back and you're like, oh no, I didn't record it. So this is the only way I can show you how I did those trees. So you get a fan brush and you use the chiseled edge of the fan brush with burnt umber, probably a little bit of blue to darken up and some yellow to give it a little bit of greenish hint to it. You just get those first and that way you can establish how tall you want your trees. Okay, so some are taller than others, some are shorter than others. You don't want to be all the same height. Just want to have them so that they look like just tall ones and short ones. All right. Just add a little bit more yellow so you'll be able to see. So it's burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And yellow. So I'm just going back and forth. Back and forth at the corner of my brush. Try and get a tree shape. Okay. So you push. As you come down further, you can push harder. My fan brush is a little bit worn out. But, uh. Well. Just adding more paint to keep it nice and wet. And you just use the corner of the brush. Just tap little taps at the top. And then as you come down, you move further back and forth, back and forth, out to the left to the right and down. That's how you do it. Takes practice, as you can see. Your fan brush is, uh, and you have to have a bristle fan brush, not a, not a synthetic, because they're too soft. Use a bristle, nice and stiff, and that way you'll be able to use the corner to get those uh, tree shapes. Like I said, that my fan brush here that I'm using is, is a bit worn, and uh, I used it because I wanted to get some really rough trees. I wanted to get some rough look looking trees. So,
Good. Now what we're going to do is just put a few little taps on those trees. Give them like there's little taps on the trees. So just take a long liner brush and then twirl it around in your paint and then make these little taps. There you go. Try to make them as skinny as you can. Sometimes I push a bit too hard. <laughs> Just adding a few little more branches and extending the tree a little bit. You can make adjustments to your trees and shape them up a bit better and we're going to lighten up the dark color that I made for the trees a little bit of yellow highlight the trees a little bit just to bring them bring them out a bit more Let's add some more yellow Just tap on a little bit on the tree branches there. Don't lose all your darks. So you don't you want to just tap it on here and there. Some the edges there and different places, but try to keep the underpainting, the dark. Make sure that the, the light is only on bits and pieces of the tree. See how it's coming, see how it's bringing out a bit more.
and that trail is a little bit of shaping up. <laughs> Just clean up your edge. Sienna and yellow. up a little bit with some yellow so it'll all blend nicely as you'll see in the, the original painting that I did like I said that's just a sample to show you how I did the trees there we go So I got a little liner brush here, a little bit smaller than the one I already used, and I'm making a light, lighter color, creating those tops in this in this one. That's how I create the tops. The other one I showed you closer, you can see it better. That's what I'm doing here, the same thing as I did in the other um, sample. I'm just adding the tops of the trees. I got my fan brush and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just adding a little bit of more branches at the tops of those trees. I used a liner brush 
on the other sample. But you can use a liner brush or a fan brush, a small fan brush. lightening up my burnt umber. Just going to highlight some of the tree branches as I did in the other sample. Scrubbing the bottom of the trees. Blend in so it won't look like it's separated. Just trying to get a few shadows from the trees, but I'm not, sh you know, like, didn't want them to be prominent or anything, so I just kind of put them on there and then still painted over them so that they would be underneath the painting, but a little bit of shadow there. It's kind of nice. I like to experiment. So sometimes I'll do something and I'll look at it and I'll say, hmm, I don't know if I like that. And then I'll paint over it. <laughs> so you can do that too. This is all about learning. So what I do in this painting here, sometimes I'll paint something, I might even go over it. I paint over it. And at least it'll show you that you can adjust things and you can experiment and have fun with it. A lot of people are 
they email me and say, I can't get my painting exactly like yours. And I'm like, don't. Just use uh, the basics that I showed you and do your own thing. Okay. I mean, you could even change the color of that there if you wanted to. I'd see how I painted over it. I was like, I'm not sure if I like those shadows. So I just painted over them. You can still see them a little bit. Well, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I liked him or not. If I liked him, I would have left him there. Not because there's anything wrong with him or anything like that. It's just, it's just you have to make decisions. And you have to make a lot of decisions. So when you make your decisions and you don't like it, then paint over it or change it or add some color or just experiment with it and see what happens. makes it so much more fun because then you're in control like you're in control of the painting the painting's not in control of you you have to take control of your brushes your paints canvas and you make all the decisions see how I lighten it up down there now I might I'll change that a little bit after too so but I'm just putting something there just to uh, Establish what I want to do. That's some yellow and brown there. Okay, that's what I wanted to darken it up a bit down there. Okay. Well, I'm kind of experimenting right now. I'm adding white to help me blend out the colors. Still adding a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt umber. Adding white helps brighten up the colors, plus it helps to uh, spread the paint easier. You can also use my Magic White recipe from time to time, or uh, Magic Mist. I have I have many recipes to help you, because our acrylics dry so fast, but I have uh, some recipes I put together to help you blend your paints better and to help them spread better and almost act sort of like oil paintings. I have other videos on that. And my fan brush now. Fan brush with yellow, burnt umber, white. <laughs> oh. Across here, just to make some nice little, um, kind of a grassy look. You just tap, tap, tap on some wet paint across, and then you pull up your fan brush. using my synthetic flat to uh, smooth out that edge there. Fan brush, a small fan brush. Just tapping out little bits of grass here and there.
just using a lighter color yellow, like some yellow with some white. Just tap, 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 tap. adding some highlights to the area up on top. It's a very light yellow, white and yellow. Still using my fan brush. Small flat brush here for adding darker grass. That's my fan brush. I find it get better. Results with a fan brush when it comes to grass. Sometimes you have to experiment, experiment with different brushes. See what kind of results you get. You might find different brushes work better for you for things like grass, trees, than than a bristle brush. It could be a could be a synthetic brush, but I find bristles brushes are really good for when you're punching and tapping and you know pouncing. You need a good sturdy brush, good bristle. Synthetics are soft. You get the same results. So I'm just getting a darker area up here. Trying out some different brushes. I have this a flat bristle, and it's a smaller. Scrubbing it in there now, just to get it to move on the side there. There we go. That'll blend in then further down. go just spreading it out smoothing it in small bristle as you can see I'm experimenting with some of my brushes so I use my fan brush and I was going to go with the grassy look which would look nice too then I decided to use a bristle brush to smooth it all in. I'm adding white to smooth it all out again and blend it.
wanted to make that little patch there for some flowers, so that's why I'm making it a bit darker there. Just mixing some yellows and burnt umbers together just to get different kind of shadowy foreground for flowers. my fan brush to get some grassy look to it. That's my large um, synthetic brush or nylon, and uh, it's probably half an inch. And I just put some yellow on one side and burnt umber and white on the other side. Just kind of so I get, as you can see, I'm getting these nice separations of colors. liner brush. Some yellow on one side and burn dumber on the other side. It's 
Let me get a few stems here for flowers. Take the back of your brush and tap on some burnt umber to place your flowers. Using your liner brush, it makes some nice pretty flowers. Some daisies and just touch on the edge of the where that you put your burnt umber. Now you can take your little liner brush and
as much as possible. This is a great brush for making flowers. See how the bristles open up individually and they give you some beautiful flowers. Simple, so fast. Just watch. See, you get all these little flowers just by tapping. It takes a long time to do them individually, but this way, this brush, make really nice flowers, just a little tap. Step over where you think you like to have some flowers. And add different color flowers. Liner brush. Run it through your yellow. Make some stems. So run it through your yellow on one side and blue on the other.
I can take a liner brush and make kind of a grayish color and you can make these looks like tree trunks. So you can see Bob Ross is there on the side to your right and his calendar and uh, I have that in my Amazon shop if you would like uh, I'll leave the link below if you'd like to pick up one of those it's so cute I should have picked it up and um, showed you that he actually talks <laughs> gives these cute little sayings so it's talking bobblehead a Bob Ross talking bobblehead I'll put the link in the uh, in my description for you so you can have a look see if you want one <laughs> so I'm just kind of uh, highlighting the trees a little bit not too much Just use my fan brush, add little bits of grass, some green paint. You can use the sap green if you like, or any medium to dark green. Could have uh, added your grass first and add your flowers next. Um, I wasn't going to add the grass and because I was just going to leave it as it was, but then I thought it probably will look better because the flowers will be coming out of the grass. But you can do it either way. Sometimes you might make decisions after you have something done. Makes it a little bit harder at times sometimes if you do it backwards, but sometimes it'll work out.
So now we'll add a fence with our small flat brush. Synthetic. It can also be a filbert. Okay, let's see how it's round. Give, give that round look on the edges. You use a flat. on some grass there at the bottom of the fence, some ground the fence. So it looks like it's on top of the grass.
using a liner brush to add more flowers, stems, or grass down on the fence there. make pretty little flowers just by dipping in your liner brush with red and white. And just add more touch to the flowers.
So here we are taking a flat brush with some brown burnt umber on one end corner and white on the other corner and that will highlight your fence and give you a shadow at the same time. A smaller brush for inside posts there, white on top and brown on the bottom. Burnt umber. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, they're really nice colors. Might need a smaller brush if you're doing that, make sure your brush not too big. <laughs> Minus.
clean out your mirror, paint with clean wet brush. There we have it. It's beautiful. Beautiful landscape.